Hi guys, happy Friday. Sorry about that, we did a first take of uh, Coffee Talk Live and suddenly I had no internet connection. <laughs> Which is not helpful when you run a digital platform. So hopefully we're all gonna be back up and ready to go. <laughs> and this will be successful. So I was telling you I lost track a little bit of time because I, I was looking into this story that I saw come up very last minute that I wanted to include it on our website. Does the name Clotilda mean anything to you? Clotilda. Clotilda is the name of the last slave ship that smuggled slaves from West Africa to Alabama. It was burned, apparently, in uh, right around Mobile, Alabama. And for years, investigators have been looking for it. And sometimes they've thought they've discovered it, but they've never found it. What's interesting about the history of those brought over um, from West Africa is they indeed became slaves for several years before the end of the Civil War, illegally again, because in 1808, America had, had made it illegal to import slaves, but slavery was still legal. So there was this huge smuggling ring that was happening, I mean, for decades after that. So anyhow, those that were brought over developed this community, after they were free, developed this community called Africa, Africatown, USA, right near Mobile, Alabama. And it was a community of freed slaves that had recent memories of living in Africa. So they developed their own community that grew to almost 10,000 people with the chief and like their own, you know, government, their own kind of social order. And over the years, the history was, I don't want to say lost, but as some of the descendants say to this Associated Press, there was sort of a shame in, in knowing that they were descendants from um, the slave ship and from freed slaves. And so the community now is around a thousand people. But this weekend, now the descendants of the slave ship, of the Clotilde, of those brought over from the slave ship, are putting together a festival to bring the descendants together to make sure that the shared history isn't lost. And so it's just sort of like a, a fascinating story that could be easily missed that I just wanted to make sure that we, we noted it. Again, no one knows where the Clotilde is and, and investigators and historians just want it because they wanted for American history to have an understanding of, of this smuggling trade. Anyhow, uh, just sort of a side story. I doubt you're going to see it anywhere, <laughs> but I thought I think it's. I just think it's a, it's really fascinating, and I would love to to go. Unfortunately, in the area in Africa, Africa town, there's no. Um, what they want to do is start more of a preser preservation. Um, area. There's like a one chimney left from a house that was built there. And there's a woman that apparently has a lot of artifacts, but one of their welcome centers was destroyed during Hurricane Katrina. So I think it's a big, it's a big deal, this festival of, of having shared stories come together. And when you think about it, it's sort of remark. I mean, 1860 wasn't that long ago. Yeah, it's not that many generations. So that gives us a little bit of perspective as, you know, as so many stories today still sort of battle, as you see it in the state of Virginia, you know, um, about race relations and what that means in America. So anyways, that's just one story I thought you should know today as we kind of ease into the weekend. A couple other things I think you should know you're going to see a lot written on social media about a new green deal, it's called. This is a deal that was put together by the young Congresswoman Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez and uh, Senator Markley, I hope I'm saying that correctly, <laughs> from Massachusetts. Just so you're clear about something, this is a wish list of basically all kind of big ideas when it comes to climate change in America over the next 10 years. And there's a lot of folks that are making fun of it, but what you should know, because it has ideas like, we're gonna eliminate air travel. <laughs> you know, like the lawmakers in Hawaii are like, really? Well, how, okay, well, you know, there's things like that in it. Um, uh, or the amount of wind turbines that need to be built that seem like pie in the sky ideas. I wanna caution everybody about the criticism. You read it for yourself. I'll try to, actually it was put up on the website. I don't know if it was brought down. So, But what you need to know, just if anyone's talking about this, this isn't a legislation. It's not like something that people are gonna vote on. It's like, an, like the, a big idea. And that can become legislation. And what's interesting is different um, presidential candidates for the Democrat Party are sort of jumping onto this bandwagon because they don't want to be missed. You know, this is a young congresswoman that's very popular with Democrat youth. And, you know, she's kind of um, leading this charge. But check out this dynamic. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi put a climate change committee together. 
and the Congress, young Congresswoman wasn't put on, wasn't put on it. So I don't know, just, just have a grain of salt when you see this stuff, whether you're on Facebook or Twitter, or I, I doubt Instagram will really get into it because Instagram doesn't really get into that stuff so much. Um, but just know that it's just sort of this proposal. And I also think people need to be very careful about who they make fun of because the ideas that are made fun of, you know, last year become reality. So maybe there's a bigger question about, well, what is really the momentum for climate change legislation in America? Like, what are the American people really willing to do? And is that really a topic that voters demand attention to right now? I don't know. We'll see. Quick study, just want to mention to you. How many of you guys own pets? I didn't know 60% of Americans own a cat or a dog. I don't know. We don't own one. I have enough wild animals in my household. Like, <laughs> we get, like, really... Can you imagine my household right now with like a pet over my shoulder? <sighs> my husband wants a puppy. We need to talk him out of it. At least right now. Okay. Interesting story in the New York Times. Not particularly tied to any like major news angle, but I just thought it would be fun for you to know this <laughs> this weekend. It is tied to real data. You know, everyone talks about Americans being obese and overweight, which is always like really wonderful to be reminded of. Apparently our pets are too. Our pets are having obesity problems in America. So if you have a pet, I'm looking at you. Because 17% of pet, like only 17% of pet owners recognize that their pets have problems. They're in denial. <laughs> They're in denial that their pets are obese and the pets are having, you know, health problems, hip problems, heart problems, all sorts of things, just like we do. So pets are just like us, a little bit overweight, but maybe happy, maybe happy. <laughs> So, again, just kind of wanted you to know, it's just to put that on your 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 radar. I'm not suggesting anyone needs to go on a diet. I would never make that judgment. Interesting nugget that my girlfriend found who uh, created this card for, for us, colleague, amazing colleague. Um, chicken ownership is up. Poultry ownership is way up in America. But as she put, we're unsure if the chicken are also overweight. <laughs> There's no data on that yet. Okay, I'm looking at you, Jennifer Gardner, who has chickens in her backyard. We're gonna come and weigh them. Okay, final thing you should know, John Dingell, the longest serving congressman, a Democrat from Michigan, passed away. And he's a really fascinating person. What I want you to do, if you have time today, on social media or our website, please check out the quote that we isolated from him just about the purpose of government, um, giving people a, a helping hand so that they can, they can achieve their goals. And what I would like you to do is just think about him as a Democrat in contrast to some of what we're hearing from Democrats today, because we talked a little bit about Democrat socialists yesterday. That's not a criticism of a Democrat party, but it's interesting to look at where parties were, what were, what were different ideologies of the party even 10, 20, 30 years ago. He started as a congressman because his father passed away suddenly, and he assumed the position, even though he was, you know, he was young, he was involved in politics in his 20s, his dad was a congressman, but he just has kind of like a very uh, fun, loving personality, had a great sense of humor, but apparent, apparently very, like very imposing. And some of the things I think you should know is that he enjoyed hunting, but he also really enjoyed the ballet. And the first date that he apparently brought his wife, Debbie, who's a serving member of Congress, um, was to the ballet. So just kind of an interesting guy and somebody that we can appreciate, I think you know, for his service to the country, even though you may not agree with all of his platforms. An interesting, an interesting personality. So just something I think you should check out today. Hope you guys have a great weekend. We have a ton of great content coming up next week. Oh my gosh, I got really into the measles last night, but here's why we didn't cover it on the site today. Just a heads up. In Washington state, there's a public hearing about whether or not Washington should with basically re rescind or limit its current vaccination laws. Right now in the state of Washington, just like the state of Oregon and many other states, if you want to opt out of vaccinating your kids, you can for no reason. Like, no, you don't have to say a reason. Like, you don't have to say, oh, my religion or medically I can't do it. You can just say philosophically I disagree with it, so I'm opting out. And, you know, schools are like, okay. And now these states are wondering if they should keep it. So I want to see what happens with the. I don't believe that that hearing is going to have like a. It's not a vote. You know, we're not going to have a conclusion. But it's happening today. There's going to be some protests, and I kind of want to see what's what's going on with that. But 
fascinating debate on vaccinations. We're continuing to watch these different measles outbreak, outbreaks and uh, have some really good context. So stay tuned for that next week. Okay, guys, if you haven't already, go to smarternews.com and just there's like a little box and you could put your email in. I don't use um, your email for anything except for sending out a weekly newsletter on Saturday morning. That's just like a little bit of a review. A, view, a review, excuse me. <laughs> Am I drinking? Like, what is it Friday? What's going on? Um, a little bit of a review, and um, even some weeks, if there's not enough to put in the newsletter, then I skip it. So, uh, but I think it's kind of like a nice way if you're, we have coffee on Saturday morning and we don't get to chat, you can still uh, have your little smart news fix. Okay, guys, have a great weekend. Check your diets of your pets, but not on Friday, because Friday you should eat pizza and just have fun. Have a good day, guys. I'll talk to you later.